Homer today. Uh, he is hoping, of course, that um, you know the traffic isn't a problem. Uh, since the way and are going to have a few has listened to everyone who's listening and has passed through the four walls of a public university has some experience or the other. Now, why do you think so many lecturers hold students for ransom and get away with it? Why do you think so many lecturers hold students for ransom and get away with it? I was having a conversation with uh, Femi Obong Daniels a few um, days ago. I think it was last week, um, last week Tuesday, I think. It was a last week Friday, actually. And we were talking about this and... Um, I, I got on Twitter all that same day and I found this situation raging where students were talking about their experiences. And I told myself, this is a sign. You've got to have this conversation with your listeners on hard facts. In the past, we've talked about a narrow area, you know, sexual harassment. Remember the sex for grades situation, right? But it turns out that in bigger ways... um. The extortion, no day restricted to only sex. You've got lecturers who hit students up for money. They make them run errands. They make them contribute for things that should not be their business. It's a lot. I'm remembering that when I was getting my master's degree in a university, they made us contribute money to build classroom. And I remember that I was so pissed. I kept asking, Kilo Day, ah, which is concerned because I got classroom. Why am I paying money to buy cement for class? And they made it mandatory. They made it a uh, if you don't pay for for this masters, if you don't pay for this uh, uh what do they call it now? Classroom contribution cement fund. You know it will affect something something for your grade or for your score or for your exam. And I was I was. I, you, because I felt like I was too oyibo for these kind of things. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, ah, what? Ah, what? Ah, ah, what? Ah. Meanwhile, CNN is carrying uh, Nigeria threatens to sanction CNN over investigation. I'm watching it right now on my screen. It's a developing story. Becky Anderson is on the screen. And the big headline is Nigeria threatens to sanction CNN over investigation. I'll keep my, own, uh, my eye on that story. And, um... Whatever comes out of it, I'll let you know. But yes, back to Nigerian lecturers and Nigerian universities. Our big hard fact for today is that it is against the code of conduct rules for lecturers to demand gifts or contributions from students in cash or in kind or to sell anything to them relating to their education. Now, this might sound obvious, right? But if you really think about it, you may realize that in most Nigerian universities, this code of conduct is getting broken every day. That's because according to this code, even something as widespread as selling handouts is against the rules. <laughs> yeah, yeah, officially and legally, a lecturer cannot sell her students a uh, handouts. Come on, buy my handouts. Uh -uh. If they choose to give students any extra learning materials that isn't in the syllabus, it is supposed to be free. And so if a lecturer cannot even sell handouts voluntarily, they definitely cannot force students to buy them. And yet in many schools, that's exactly what happens. If you like, don't buy now. Check whether you go pass. But we're not talking about just handouts today. Let me, like I told you, I was having a conversation with uh, Femi Wong Daniels when we went for a meeting somewhere uh, on, on Lagos Island. And we were talking about how the problem is not just police. The problem is not just um, politicians. The problem is us. It's you. It's me. It's, it's our education. It's, it's the future that we're supposed to be um, um, preparing you know, it's it's that. It's this citadel that is supposed to be for learning. This citadel that is supposed to be for shaping young minds, preparing them to be the leaders of tomorrow. Look at what we're teaching them. And then I now went on Twitter and somebody did a thread about different students' experiences. These were all people who were working on their different degrees and they had finished their uh, dissertations. 
oh yeah now dissertation don't finish you want to come and defend your dissert dissertation normally university will call you on a particular day you will appear before a panel of lecturers they'll read your work they'll ask you questions to defend your work if you do well you pass if you don't do well you fail simple bet <clears throat> this person on twitter Compiled stories of how these lecturers were extorting different students and making them bring money, sometimes food, before their defense can be heard. I have a few tweets that I'm looking at right here. I'll, I'll read you a few of the tweets and then we can talk. And when we talk, tell me if you or somebody you know has a similar experience, if you've heard about these things happening. Also tell me what you think is causing this. If you're a lecturer or you know lecturers, I also want to hear from you. Because maybe, you know, my Oyibo is too much. Maybe there's an actual, you know, um, rational explanation for this. Maybe there's some, like Joyce likes to say, logic for this. So the first story, we had to pay hotel bills for the members of the panel. You could also offer sex if your supervisor is the devil's apprentice. Transport money inclusive. So with three, you demands for both sex and money. Quote, I decided I'd never have anything else to do with nigerian universities the day i saw people defending their master's dissertation presenting coolers of rice guarding eggs and crates of drinks to their supervisors i legit thought someone was getting married <laughs> can you imagine that i mean it's not funny but it's funny at the same time <laughs> these lecturers collected so much food it looked like a wedding by the way, like I told you, this is against the code of conduct. Lecturers should not even collect water from students. They shouldn't do it on a regular day. And they definitely shouldn't do it during dissertation defense. Here's another story that I, 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 I'm looking at. We were told to pay 60,000 naira each for both entertainment and logistics of external supervisor. <clears throat> External supervisor is a lecturer that comes in from another school to test the students on the panel. The reason that um, they use external supervisors is to guard against corruption and bias, right? So the concern was the students and the lecturers from the same school know each other. So there might be friendship or there might be enmity. So to avoid bias, it's better to bring in an outsider. But now you're hearing that even the outsider... You know, they are contributing money for the guy and nothing they happen. Somebody else tweeted and said, We spent the night prior to my mother's defense at the University of Eloring cooking coolers of rice with assorted meat for the lecturers. We fed the whole department, paid a prior fee of 2,000 naira, still gave supervisor a gift. This same supervisor then came on one of my Facebook posts to say how I am too opinionated to get married. I blocked him for my peace of mind. I don't have strength. <laughs> I always wondered about that, by the way. Why do so many lecturers now, you know, get so familiar with their students and start trying to intrude into their personal matters? I've always wondered about that. Another story here on Twitter. My husband was so frustrated by his Yo supervisor that he abandoned his MBA and finally got it from a UK university without any sort of bribery, end quote. We see this a lot, by the way. In, in my school where I got my master's degree from, a lot of people just abandoned theirs midway and just left the country because it was too stressful. It's one of the big reasons so many people leave Nigeria to study abroad. Somebody tweeted, in Esut, Chai, Esut is my alma mater, Ochineke. In Esut, students have to buy brand new, eh? In Esut, students have to buy brand new suits for their supervisors. <laughs> you know, it's a fashion. <laughs> and here, here's another story, here's another story. <clears throat> Envelopes filled with money, hotel bills, payment to the school, external supervisor's fee, the mental stress. Ah, the only reason I'm still doing it is because I've come too far to stop. After master's, I'll never do anything school in this country again. Never. After master's, never again. Think about all the brilliant people who have been discouraged from higher education because of this type of extortion. 
Because it's not just at master's level. Even at bachelor's level, it didn't happen. Even OND and HND, it didn't happen. So we have to ask ourselves why it is happening. And if there's even anything we can do to stop it. Now, these are the stories of people on Twitter. I want to hear your own stories, Lagos. Tell me your stories. Has this happened to you? You can talk anonymously because, you know, some schools are vindictive. They may want to <laughs> take back your certificates. So maybe don't call the name of your school. But, of course, if you get mind, call their name too because, I mean, we're trying to get a better Nigeria, right? But has this happened to you? Or has it happened to somebody that you know? If you are a lecturer or if you know lecturers... Tell us about it from the other angle. Maybe there's something that we're not seeing, you know? Maybe there's a there's an angle to this story that we're not seeing from the from the other side of the table. 0700-993-993-993. 0700-993-993-993. My first caller is Chinedu. Chinedu is in Ogun State. Chinedu, welcome to the show. Thanks for calling. Uh, afternoon. Yeah, afternoon. Thank you mm. Has yeah. this happened to you or somebody that you know? Uh, thankfully, the school I attend, I left the Kwele University mm. in uh, Ebony State. Uh, so far, in my third year, I've never experienced any such like that. Okay. Uh, I think it's one of the few examples I may give, but... Oh, no, 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 no. I am so sorry, Chinidu. If you can call back, please call back. Uh, let's take another call. Uh, 99.3, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. What's your name? My name is Ifani. Ifani, good to have you on the show. Yeah, a graduate of Esu. A graduate of Esu, okay. Did this happen to you in Esu or did it happen to somebody you know? It nearly happened to me, but I changed it from my lecture. It nearly happened to you? Yeah, I changed it from my lecture. I threatened him. Ah. But I can't give him anything. Tell me what nearly happened to you. He forced me, he wanted to force me to give him something, to give him an envelope. Okay. And but you st- I refused. And he told me that I will pay, that I will not pass my project. Hmm. That was my bachelor's level. Okay. Then I threatened him that if, 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 if I fail that cause, that, in fact, that his family is at risk. Okay. And, and it worked? It worked. Hmm. It and worked. you passed, huh? I passed uh, as industrial chemistry. Wow. Um, so, but what do you think we can do so that people that don't have mind to threaten their lecturer do not face the same thing? We need to have a good educational system, especially starting from the vice chancellor and governing council of the school. The, the governing council of the school is supposed to have some uh, an investigative uh, panel that will be investigating and uh, admitting students. Uh, report because sometimes they don't use their students' reports because all of them are cohorts in the business of uh, escorting students. So we need a sanitizer educational system. Mm. Well, thanks for calling me. We've got Don Undukwe in uh, Sabo Yaba calling. Don, welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for calling. I will not call the name of the school. I did HND. I did HND. Okay. Some years ago. Okay. What my eyes see. Tell me, tell me, tell you me. You will, you will, the, the handout, handout you are supposed to buy for 500 naira. Mm. You, are, you, are, you, you will buy it for 2,000 naira. Mm. All the lecturers, mm. all the lecturers. And the dean and adult, you know, they believe you are working, you just, you know, mm. that kind of thing. They, they told us because we are an adult and they know we are working, mm. we are making money. You understand? Mm. Uh, if I tell you how many how many uh, account number I have, all the lecturers have their account number. You just have to send money. In fact, it's just too much. Then I start saying, what if I'm sponsoring somebody? I didn't think I'm sponsoring somebody. Maybe the person come and tell me, I will say it's, the person is lying. lying. You understand? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That is just, it's just too much. Man. Mm. So not everything you hear is pure truth. Any student that call you, mm. In fact, it is true. What my eyes see. Oh. <laughs> no, but 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 Don, do you think that there's something that we, that we can do to stop it? What can we do to stop it? Unless if, if government step in, if government will, will should step, step in, I think it will be better. Then they will have what what we call um, uh, task force 
on uh, to be monitoring the, the lecturers mm. secretly for that matter. Okay. If you say physically, okay, you'll be wasting your time. Mm. Hmm. 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 I forget it too. <laughs> Don Dukwe, thanks for calling me. Theo is in Omole Estate. Theo, good to have you on the show How today. Are you? Welcome. How are you? I'm well. Good to be on your show for the first time. Fantastic. After so many tries. <laughs> I think that uh, is it. Uh, is this the same program that's discussing the funding of the university? Yes, it was same problem. Yes, a program. Yes. Correct. Mm. Uh, it has been a long time that I've been saying mm. that it is actually a uh, a misadventure for the government of Nigeria to attempt to fund public universities. Okay. And you can see the problem we have had for so many years. If you calculate how many years, ASU have gone on strike, yeah. saying that they are fighting for better funding. At the same time, they are populating Ghanaian universities with Nigerian students. Hmm. The Ghanaian authorities have identified the kind of revenue that comes from Nigeria. So if all these students can afford it, why are we deceiving ourselves that Public universities must be funded by government. Hmm. So the universities need to look inward. There's no way universities can say that they cannot find funding or make themselves viable. When you are the ones training the very people who will develop the society. You know, how can universities say they can't develop their roads when they have departments that are into construction, uh, civil engineering? They can't build their, their, <laughs> their, 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 their houses. They cannot manufacture food for the community of the universities to make revenue. The universities, they can't do research and submit and sell research findings and development to corporate bodies to use and develop. See, today, many Nigerian food juice companies are selling recipes from India. All of this developed by graduates, just first degree holders. And so, and Nigerian universities, are the professors, are, it's a, it, I call it, um, I call it um, a gathering of lazy academicians. Huh. That's why they are, Nigeria can only survive based on the quality of people that we turn out of universities. And uh, people are arguing that if, they, if the federal government stops funding universities, what will happen is that um, they will, people cannot afford it. Mm. Yes, indeed. That is why you have student loans. Mm. That's why you have scholarship. Mm. That's why you encourage people who are more brilliant. In Ghana, for example, there is a certain grade that you come out in work with, and you'll be off fee paying students. But those who have less grade pay fees, and is graduated down there. And so we cannot deceive ourselves. It is in important that government should fund the secondary school education for free and ensure that the quality of secondary school is enough that whoever comes out of Nigerian secondary school can even stand as a bank cashier. Hmm. Well, Theo, you make quite so, a compelling argument. So I believe the universities can fund themselves because they have capacity which they have not deployed, which they have not tapped into. And it is too expensive for us to give quality education to so many people without government, re with government revenue dwindling every day. Mm. And the president has come out to, to raise the alarm and people will start saying, how can he not? Did he not enjoy can you compare their time, the, number, the, the population of the student? Look at the quality of our graduates. Mm. It's an embarrassment. Very unemployable. Well, Theo, thanks for calling. Let's talk to Bankole in Abulegba. Bankole, how are you? I'm very fine. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. It's my first time caller, actually. Great. Great to have you on the show. Have you had this experience with uh, dissertations? Or do you know people who have had it? Yes, I've had experience. I did my and then bachelor's at Obafi Naolo University, but something like that doesn't happen in this year forever. Okay. But when I did my master's in University of Lagos, it was a different story entirely. Hmm. You know, when you have to do anything at all, hmm. even, even, not even at times, seminar presentations, hmm. you don't tell you to you have to present refreshments, talk less, you know, so during the dissertation, it was like a party, like you said. <laughs> You know, when you, I think before you finish the master's, you did like four seminar presentations. Mm. But then every time you have to give refreshments to the lecturer, it's mm. very annoying. You know, and it's I also point, and it's also illegal. It's very illegal. It's, 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 it, it, it's, it's illegal. It's actually against their code of conduct. You know, but it's very annoying. I find it very weird because coming from Ife, mm. you don't do anything like that. 
Mm. It means uh, when a lecturer wants to give an handout, it, when he gives it out, mm -hmm. maybe the classroom will go and photocopy it and give us a copy. That was all. Mm. Oh, you don't pay for handouts in Ife? Or you didn't at the time? Now, why, why do you think this culture has come? And do you think there's uh, there's something we can do to kick it out? Well, the only thing that can be done is to take it to the highest level, which is the university, the school management itself. You know, there is nothing students can do. Or, or if there is a strong student body, like in Ife, because Ife had have a very strong student in your body. Right. That's two against things like that. So it's very difficult for you to be victimized by lecturer or all things like selling your van down. Right. It was because of the student in your body really. It wasn't because of the school management. So if that can if every school can have strong children in your body, hmm. I think I think that that could that could help. Bankoli, thank you for calling. Igwe is in Victoria Island. Igwe, welcome. Yeah. Have you exactly. experienced this, or you know people who have experienced it? I, I have experienced it particularly. Ah, <laughs> tell me your story. When I was doing my BSc in Imoso University. Mm, turn your radio off. I can hear your radio. Okay. Yes, go oh, ahead. No. Mm -hmm. So I experienced it. I experienced it particularly me and myself. Mm. So everything, even the test, even before I can be able to take a test, ordinary test, mm -hmm. you have to pay for you have to pay for it. <laughs> hand out, we pay for hand out. Ordinary typing down, you know, as if it's a uh, every material you have, a lecturer will give it give to you, you will pay for it. Wow. So it was it, it was bad experience, very very bad. <laughs> My very, goodness. Very bad. Now I'll I'll ask you as well what I'm asking everybody else. Do you think that there's a way to end this? Yeah, of course, of course. There's a way to end it. If our government, people are in charge, if they really want to look into it, there's a way to end it. What's the way? Tell me. If, if they can put eye and monitor the lecturers, if they can set a, 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 governing, a governing body that can monitor the lecturers, and they, can, they can end it. There's a way to end it. Mm. Igwe, thanks yes, for calling me. You know, uh, one of my first callers um, said, um, handout that you're supposed to buy 500. And I'm telling you that you're not even supposed to buy handout. You're not even supposed to pay for handout. But hey, let me come back to that in a bit. Skills from all over the place, so trust me, you want to catch this. So real quick, do catch this. An American company in Lekki, Lagos, is now recruiting for different departmental positions. They need individuals with great personality. I, I, I have a lot of horsemen that they will they will come um, to you to help them to with their... Olua Femi, we have to take a break in five seconds and that break will be eight minutes long. Can you wait or do you want to call back? No, I'm going to call back. All right, great.
minute game show. on the widest market selections ever. You can increase your winnings with an accumulated to two National Convention. Line with one thousand.
by the Nigerian Dental Association. Long break there, huh? It means my market is selling. <laughs> hey, the show went from 400,000 listeners in December to 720,000 listeners in November. I mean, the, the advertisers know where the listeners are, so they're putting their money where their mouth is. But hey, let's uh, make the next uh, how many minutes count? My math is terrible. How many minutes do we have left? You tell me when you call me. But uh, you're listening to Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. I am Sandra Ezekwasili. And today we're talking about some of the many terrible things that uh, Nigerian students have put through just to graduate from a university. In the past, we talk about sexual harassment, but it's not just sexual harassment. The extortion is not restricted only to sex. Lecturers are hitting their students up for money as well. They're making their students run errands. They're making them contribute for things that should not be their business, which is weird considering that it is against the code of conduct rules for lecturers to demand gifts or contributions from students in cash or in kind or to sell anything to them related to their education that's our big hard fact for today now if you think about it it, it sounds obvious but it's really not if you take a look at all the stories that we've heard on the show today now charles is in songo charles has this happened to you do you know somebody it's happened to well, Sandra, I passed through this. Wow, tell me your story. Yeah, I before before I, I actually did my BSc, mm. I had done a a diploma program somewhere in Jos. Right. And uh, that didn't really happen. So when I came from from Jos to Southwest, to invest in Southwest for my BSc, it was hellish. Uh, it's as terrible, as bad as people selling grade, lecturers selling grade, having students and all that. So I stood up against that because we had uh, we had a, a vice chancellor who was uh, at that point to allow us to ready to poach the school. And so because we were asking for a way forward, yeah, uh, I think it will work in two ways. If we could have students, who's going to stand up against this these nasty activities in mm. the various departments. Mm. And uh, we also have a vice chancellor who's ready to work. So, but I, I, though, though, of course, mm. you might, it might call back at you. Mm -hmm. They may want to take a pan of flesh, which they did. Mm. Uh, three years, I, I couldn't have my certificate, you know. Uh, but I was happy because I was able to put a stop to it, especially in my department. Yeah. I did put a stop to it. And... Well, why they, they, why they refused to allow me to graduate all that? Because I didn't have extra papers. I didn't have anything, no carry van, nothing, uh -huh. no spillover, nothing. They just decided to sit, to sit on, 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 uh, on my project and all that. Uh -huh. so I didn't, it didn't bother me because I had, of course, I'd done a diploma from those hours. I got a bank, a, a bank in the job, a, a job in the bank. So I, I was not, I was not much bothered. But uh, one thing I was happy about mm. is that the legacy I left, that I was able to stand against that. It was so much that the entire faculty, because it went from my department to the faculty, the lecturers became very conscious, very careful, because they were scared. I was able to pick one or two of them, use them as scapegoats and all that. Mm. And it really, it really helped. So the way forward for me is if Nigerian students especially students we have now, will be ready to be hardworking. Because like your last caller said, hmm. a, the, the, this, there's this lacuna that is created when students don't want to read, hmm. when you, you're not ready to read. So you make them meet you, you make them take advantage of you. Because uh, while all this went on in my, in, while I was in school, I, I, I made a promise to myself, Charles, I'm not going to bribe a lecturer. My hmm. dad, who seems to be funding my education with me at that time, was a pensioner. You don't expect me to get this pension to give to those lecturers that are making a lot of money. They make money from Facebook. They make money from 
lecture in other campuses. Right. I, I was privy to, uh, so I was privileged to help one of them pick a check from one campus where a lecture just for a month or thereabouts. Right. Had like fifty six thousand naira from right. just a campus, right. and and the school I went to in Lagos then had like ten campuses. So if you had lectured in ten campuses, you know what that will come up to. I still want me to give my own hard sweat, you no know, hard and money because I want to bribe another. So the way forward is, let's have a good vice chancellor who will be ready to work, and let's have students who will be ready to stand up against these activities in the various departments. And we're able to get, we'll be able to just pick two or three le- lecturers. Mm. All that we sit up. I can, I can, I can tell you that for free. Charles, thank you so much. What we actually want is a situation where the students don't have to be serious. Because I always say that, eh, especially when the conversation is about sexual harassment, lecturers will tell you, oh, some of these students throw themselves at us and want to have sex with us. But the onus is on you as the person with the power in that relationship. Because every le- relationship is a power dynamic. Every relationship, every single relationship is a power dynamic. And some relationships are more powerful than others. The relationship between a lecturer and their student is one of the most powerful of all because the student has zero power. The lecturer has all the powers. So a student don't read book, he can't meet you, I won't sort you. Or more, or got lecturer, report the student to a disciplinary, a disciplinary committee. You don't have to take the money or the sex that they're offering. But lecturers paint themselves as, oh, we're powerless in these things. You know, they forced me to do it. I fell on top of the money or on top of the... Joshua is in Surulere. Welcome to the show. Hello, Sandra. Good evening. Good evening. Has this happened to you or somebody you know? Huh. Yes, so it has happened to me. <laughs> Tell me your story. Oh, God help me. Tell me your story. Well, Sandra, let me start by, you know, addressing one of the issues raised by the previous caller. See, mm. it's not every Nigerian student that is lazy. Mm. Okay. Some people are just victims of circumstances. I'll I give you an example. Oh. When I was in school, um, in my first year, you know, there was this lecturer. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know that his standard was that uh, once you buy his handout, then he was sold for 3000 Once you buy his handout, you automatically have, you get an E. Now, when you now sort him with an additional 3000 then that qualifies you for E. I think a C. Up it to five thousand, you get a B. Take it to seven thousand, you get an A. Wow. No, that was so. That was the standard. I was shocked. I didn't know. I was shocked when, you know, I saw my first semester, my hundred level results. Mm-hmm. Then I moved on to two hundred level, mm-hmm. and I I saw an E for a for a paper I wrote so so well. Mm. You know, so you see, some of these things happen that even when you are in school and you know what you are doing and you study very hard, you know, you still meet these people. You see, but for people like us, one of the ways we are able to excel in school was because, you know, there are still some lecturers that we are decent. So once you put in your effort, your best effort into courses like that, mm. automatically it will help you to, you know, make up for whatever shortage you get from all these lecturers that will, you know, that will demand money for you from you before they can give you what you deserve, okay? Mm. But you see, what I think we can do, mm-hmm. what I think the schools need to do is, is that these lecturers have succeeded in forming a clique. And it will shock you to know that this clique even gets to the level of professors. Mm. And where do we get our vice chancellors from? Is it not from these professors? Yeah. So the professor, the VCs, or the school management needs to purge themselves first. Because it will shock you to know that even these professors are part of this clique. They are part of this anomaly in school. So the VC needs to purge himself. After the VC has purged himself, that is when he can now begin to checkmate all these activities. Hmm. You see, I, I tell you, sometimes when you are in the classroom and you hear so what lecturers say in classrooms, right. it, it shocks you. I don't know. It does. It really does. Will be so proud to come to class. Will begin to describe the private part of the of a student that he slept with Whoa. in the class. Whoa! Isn't that terrible? Whoa! That happens. And you see, they do it with so much. You know, they brag so much about it. That there is really nothing anybody can do to them. You know, so if, I think it even goes beyond the level of the VC. You know, the government needs to pay more attention. We have visitors to this university. 
you know, if they can even give these students a way to reach them be, beyond the school management, because sometimes the school management has been corrupt. So if the, if the visitor can even give us, you know, just like having a company where you have the management and you have the auditor. Right. You know, create something like that where people can, you know, co- make complaint, anonymous complaint. A complaint that will not lead to you being victimized or you being witch hunted. Well, some schools have that. Well, the problem usually is um, what what the results are afterwards. Joshua, thank you so much for calling me. Now, the last 15 minutes of Hard Facts today are brought to you by UNICAF. UNICAF is a leading global education organization. They're based in Europe and they provide scholarships for online education. So you can stay here in Nigeria and study online with one of their partner schools like um, the University of Suffolk uh, in the UK, uh, the Liverpool University, Liverpool John Moores University in the UK, uh, the University of East London also in the UK, and the University of California, uh, Riverside Extension, USA. Now, if you don't um, uh, want to cook rice... <laughs> For your external examiner, or you don't want to sew cloth for your external examiner, you know, maybe you should give Unicaf a call on 07000 111 000. 07000 um, 111 000. That's their number. Or you can also call 081 686 64442. 0816 866 4442. If you want to study, online so for the next 15 minutes um um we will be having the conversation we've been having about why uh, so many lecturers hold students for ransom and get away with it courtesy of uh, unicaf and like i said unicaf is a leading global education organization unicaf scholarship can help you earn a british master's degree at affordable cost through online study. Choose any one of UNICAF's partners in the UK, the University of Suffolk, Liverpool John Moores University, or the University of East London. Use any electronic device connected to the internet from a laptop to a mobile phone. Access materials 24-7 via the UNICAF state-of-the-art digital platform. Earn exactly the same degree as on-campus students in the UK from the comfort of your home. Together with a generous UNICAF scholarship, you receive 3 gig data from MTN to help you in your studies. Build the career and life of your dreams with a British master's earned online through UNICAF. Call 07000 111 000 to find out more. 07009993993993. That's our studio number. Have you experienced uh, a, th- a similar situation with my previous callers? We've been talking about um, when students want to defend their thesis or defend their, their dissertations, they have to do a lot of crazy stuff. And I'm asking today if this is something that has happened to you. We've got Unus in Ibejuleki. I'm not sure if that's the correct name. Oh, Yunus. Oh, Yunus. Welcome. Thanks for calling. Okay. Welcome, Yunus. You're live on the show. Has this happened to you or somebody you know? Well, I had my own experience. Okay. It wasn't as terrible as it is, as some people are expre- expressing here. The one thing I know is that as a student, we should all realize that we have the responsibility as much as we want government intervention in everything, mm. we should also realize that we have the responsibility of realizing the enormity of the impact of lecturers' behaviors, being it sexual or extortion, mm. whatever it is. Mm. And we have student government, uh, student union government in almost all the campuses, especially mm. the public universities or polytechnics, colleges of education, as the case may be. We need to be bold at some point in our life. If we sit down somewhere and we think the system will change itself, we will continuously be shortchanged, and we keep complaining all our lives. Government can do a lot, but we should also realize that they, we, there is this power in us, and we must use that to our own advantage. The Minister of Education will not know exactly what is happening on your campus. Mm. The student union government is like a pressure group on campus there. It must be put to work. 
and we have the responsibility of ensuring that it works in favor of the student. Right. The pressure group. We've seen instances that the student union government shut down school for one reason or the other. So let it be for the reason that would benefit the students in the long run. It's unfortunate that we have students that are brilliant, but because of lecturers' misdeeds, you have them coming out with poor academic performance, as it is on paper. But in reality, they are much more brilliant than what you see in their certificate. So we need to take advantage of the student union government. And when, when, when we talk about this, you know, we are always concerned about government at the center, state, local government, as the case may be. Student union government is a government on its own. We must get involved and ensure that we get things done rightly at all levels. So I believe we can achieve a lot through the student union government. Okay. And getting involved in politics is what every young Nigerian should be interested in. Mm. Okay. So with that, we can change policies at the university level, polytechnic, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. colleges of education. Mm -hmm. And if we are able to make an impact at that level, mm. we can also find ourselves in the national politics at some point to make changes. We should understand that changes is not going to take to us. Thank you so much. You have been insightful, Yunus. Thank you. Reminds me of a conversation I was having with my husband about this same subject. And he told me an interesting story. Both of his parents were lecturers. But back when his mother was doing her master's, his father was already a professor in the same university where uh, his mother was doing um, her master's. Now, they were not in the same department. They were not even in the same faculty. They were married before she started school there. But yet, when it was time for her to defend her dissertation, the university was very worried that there would be bias in her favor. They had to go to serious lengths to get external supervisors to make sure that there was no appearance of, oh, because she's a professor's wife, we made it easier for her. And this was in the late 70s. So when I hear a story like that, I have to ask myself, how have things changed so radically? How did the standards drop so much? Because this na Niger they go school, no be Oyibo school. Lo. Schools in Niger here. Yeah. He also told me that when he was growing up on university campus, lecturers were too afraid to sell handouts. If they caught you, you were gone. But now not only are they selling handouts, they're making students so clot and cook food. If not, you won't sit for your defense. <laughs> Thank God. How did things get this bad? Some say it's uh, the crash in um, salaries of lecturers from the 80s until today. But is that not the same excuse that the police give? They say that uh, they extort because salaries are bad. I mean, if you think about that, does this mean that all of us should start extorting each other because of poor salaries? My salary is also bad. Should we all start extorting each other? What are the root causes of this problem? Why have things gotten so much worse since the 70s and the 80s? By the way, this segment of Hard Facts is brought to you by UNICAF. Um, they can help you get a scholarship to study online with any of their partner universities in the UK and the US. So even if you don't have a visa or you cannot leave your job here in Nigeria, so people like me who are professionals, you can still get a foreign education online. They have a state-of-the-art uh, online platform that is called um, Virtual Learning Environment. And that's where all the schooling takes place. So you can get a bachelor's degree, a master's degree. You can even get a PhD. It's very straightforward. Now, if you want to find out more, you can call their Lagos office on 07000 um, And that's it. 07000 And that's it. You can also call 081-686-6442. Six eight six six triple four two, and I'm pretty sure nobody's going to be asking you to sell clothes. <laughs>
Well, let me take a call or two. 0700-993-993-993. Join the show on uh, Nigeria Info 99.3. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Good evening, Joe. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Ruben. Ruben, why have things gotten much worse since the 70s and the 80s? Why are? Why have things gotten much worse? I told you the story about, uh, you know, these lecturers in uh, the 70s. Why have things gotten much worse? Well, it's basically because the federal government universities, the government are not controlling them. Okay? The government is leaving them alone to generate their own resources and do as they like. You know? You know, and they say that um, it's like cat. Cat to call it pot black. The government is corrupt. The lecturers are powerful. So they leave them, they let them alone to also be corrupt. I finished from the, from the university in Nigeria, in a federal university. Mm -hmm. I came out with top class. Mm -hmm. But that was not what I declared. Okay. Because we protested against some lecture, I, I I saw with my own eyes my own lecturer using a, a note a note from 1977 to be to, 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 to be lecturing us. These were what we protested against. Though they demoted some of those lecturers, hmm. but we, we also paid for we it. Still we still suffered for it. And doing the examination and I said we, we, we and we brought up some stuff against us. the panel. Some of us were, were, were rusticated. That was rusticated for a semester. Wow. I'm sorry. And, and this is for standing up for your right. Exactly. At Creative Arts, they also fought against the sexual harassment. So some of those students were, 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 were also accused of um, all sorts of, sort of, sort of trumped up charges. Hmm. That was how the protest culture has been destroyed. The university system. What are we to become where we cannot even voice out to fight for our rights? We have to take it the way it is. Just come to school, pay for the handouts and the set lecturers, and you, you are fast. So this is what is going on. The federal, it, it, it's not because of this um, Ogu, Ogu, Dabalaki, and that sort of Ogu problem. Hmm. The federal government is not saying that this thing seems to be relaxed. So no, how is it wrong? How can you set up an institution and you don't even know how money comes in and how money comes out? So these are the problems we are, are, are facing. Do, do, you, do you think that there's a way to solve it? What can we do to solve this problem? The only thing the federal government, if the universities are becoming too much for them to, um, to, 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 to control, hmm. sell it out. Sell it, privatize you, lads. Put 500 billion on their head. You will see billionaires and, and white men running around to buy it. I privatize your federal university. Or you should do your responsibility at the federal government. Go into this university, know how they are built on. They are making billions of... The money that you like is making a loan can feed the whole of the secondary school, primary school. Well, well I mean, if we're not in uni, Unilag's account department, we can't tell one way or the other how much money they're making. But Ruben, thanks for calling us. We'll take a quick break and then we'll wrap up the show today. A Unicat scholarship can help you earn a British master's degree at affordable cost through online study. Choose any one of UNICAF's partners in the UK. The University of Suffolk, Liverpool John Moores University.